Hello, welcome back. This is video number nine for Microsoft Azure 70-533 exam. Uh, just a quick note before we proceed further with the video. And one of the videos, I got a comment from one of the viewer that there was a, a background noise in one of the previous videos. And also when I click uh, any option like checking app service, virtual machines, anything like that, there was a noise in this thing also i believe uh, it is better now and uh, please feel free to add more suggestions and feedback in the videos your questions and i will try to fix them asap okay so uh, this is video number nine uh, in our previous videos we saw how we create an app service plan what is a web app how do we create it what is a staging slot etc so in this nugget we wanna we have to see that i have created a web app you all know by now the how do you create a web app in azure and so in this i'm gonna tell you about the configuring of the web app like you have created a web app there are some things that as a infrastructure guy you would do and there are some things that you would have to take care of so uh, in this nugget we're gonna check the application settings of the web app like you see here the journal settings window is open up by default uh, azure web app gives you this uh, versions of languages that you can use so by default the dotnet framework has been set up on uh, the version is used to run your web app if using the dotnet framework by default it's v4.7 you can change it to v3.5 the php version microsoft provides to run your web app if you are deploying a php code by default it's 5.6 you can set it off depends upon the requirement so this app service also supports installing newer versions of python you can click here to learn more the python version is off java this this is the default setting that we are checking as of now the java if you would click java 7 then it would tell you to select these tomcat versions in the newest version so the platform by default is 32 bit and this is the platform architecture of your web app i've seen few scenarios in which if the platform is selected as 32 bit the maximum memory that you will get is 2 gb it is not dependent on the size of the pricing tier of the app service plan that you are selecting if you have selected platform as 32 bit the maximum memory that you will get is 2 gb so make sure that you have a discussion on this and change it to 64 bit and you have to click on save whenever you make any changes web sockets like web sockets allow more flexible connectivity between web apps and modern browsers so it is a more advanced way of configuring the web apps in azure if required you can do that your web app would need to be built to leverage these capabilities you will have to tell your developer if he or she wants to use a website sockets the more advanced version of configuring the web app you can set it on from here but you have to make the corresponding changes in the code to make it compatible from the back end and this is always on so in iis what it used to happen is like if there was if the website is idle the app will used to reset itself after 20 minutes and if you will set this setting always on as enabled it would indicate that your web app needs to be loaded at all times so if the web app is idle if there is no traffic to your web app then the website may go idle and it would not be accepting any request so what it does it by default web apps are unloaded after they have been idle it is recommended that you enable this option when you have continuous web app jobs running on the web app so if you would not enable this option always on to on if you have configured any web jobs I will cover the web jobs late in later videos. I'm just giving you the brief idea. If you would not set it to always on, the web jobs would not run. It is the dependency. So always on will help your website not get into idle state. There are some APIs that your developer may develop 
which would not require any user intervention i mean there would be no traffic there would be no continuous traffic on those web apps so you can you should always set this feature on the managed pipeline version you can improve the performance of your stateless application by turning off the affinity cookie this is the arr managed pipeline version is the more integrated and the classic way uh, i would i have not done any changes so far in any of these scenarios i have not changed to classic or integrated i keep it integrated the default state and if you would look down is the arr affinity arr affinity uh, what it does it like when you uh, let's say you have set up the uh, website on on the back end you have set up multiple load balancers so what it does is when a user browse onto the website and it is get served from one of the location one of the load balancer from his location then every time he would visit that web app or the website it would get served from the same location from the same server so it is kind of the stateless application by turning off the affinity cookie so if you would turn off the affinity cookie the cookie feature would not work every time a user has to go through the same entire process to get to the corresponding web server that would accept the request of the user to serve any web pages so it should turn on for increased compatibility increased performance for the user while the request are being getting served from the web app so that is all so far for this video we learned a few basic configuration settings for the web app i'll see you in the next video would we'll cover the rest of the options bye bye take care